So good evening to your audience. I welcome you today for a very special webinar, The Third Dimension, which is organized by Aludaka Metal Composites Panel. A uh, very interesting webinar it's going to be with some equally interesting panelists that I have with me today. And today we're going to explore the world of possibilities which form and understand more about their usages. So before I start with the discussion, I would like to introduce the panelists to you all. So I'm going to start with Nitan Hilaker. Nitan is an artist who is the design head for a collective group named Mutation Lab, which is a multidisciplinary design and art cell. The firm explores computational approach while designing various scale spatial installation, <coughs> digital fabrication, interactive installation. Nitan, I hope I'm going correct, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, digital fabrication, interact installations, and computational consultancy for various architects. He also uses algorithms to deconstruct the captured images in picketed form using the grid of desired Indian art form. Welcome, Mr. Thank you for that introduction. You're welcome. Then I come to architect Rahul Mehta. Rahul is a senior associate with Sipatsi Architects Mumbai. An architect since the last 15 years, he passed out of Kamala Rahija Vidyanidhi Institute of Architecture and Environmental Studies. Currently, he is working with clients like Runwal, Shapuji Palanji, Lumkaj Reality, Group Sales, Anand Tanvai, Pacifica Companies, SD Corp, Market City, and then there's K. Raheja called the list is endless. Joyville, HBS, Taj, and Marriott. Welcome, Rahul, on the show. Hi, thanks for the introduction. Thanks. There's also uh, architect Monica Khosla Bhargava. Welcome, Monica, ma'am. The principal Hi. architect of Kham Consultants. Hi, ma'am. The, the principal consultant of Kham Consultants, uh, Kolkata. With 25 years of experience, she is the first woman architect from Eastern India to be selected for the Asian Paint Masters Gallery. She is an integral part of the, of the ministerial conference at the third World War Forum at Japan in 2003, which prepared the Koyote Declaration on Water. She is also the official architect for the World for Show 2020. An architecture graduate from Jadavpur University, she did her master's from SPA Delhi and post-graduation from Sweden, where she did special studies on sustainability with George Matrovi, Schumacher's partner at Intermediate Technology Group. Welcome, Mr. Ma'am. And Thanks. I also have with me uh, architect Vijay Kulkarni, who is the director, ATKV Consultants Private Limited New Welcome, sir. Thank you. An architect, you're welcome. An architect since the last 30 years, he is actively involved as a visiting jury, thesis guide, and professor for the master's course in urban design at Ayodhya College of Architecture, Jaipur, and Gurgaon. And he's also uh, okay. He he is well reputed for diverse projects for urban welfare and numerous commercial projects. He started his career working under Padma Shri Award winner Indian architect late Sri A.P. Subhide. He is also an active member in the Council of Architecture and Indian Institute of Interior Designers. I welcome all of you to the session today. Thank and you. And I'm sure we'll have a joyful session. So sure. I'm going to start the session today with uh, designer Nitan Thirulekar. Yeah. So since you are directly a producer of 3D design, so please share with us something about unique shapes. Uh, how do you plan the forms? Like, I mean, how do you visualize the forms which you give to your materials? No, I mean, it, it basically needs to start with, you know, what, I mean, materials is the second part, but we need to figure out that what is the form and that to take a, you know, to decide what form we're going to decide. It's generally from what, when we're building a project, it's generally from, what point of it, it is going to look at. So it also depends on is it like a wall base or it's like a centerpiece or it's like a ceiling base sort of a situation. So we generally go from 
like how we are viewing that form and then once we figure out that this is the concept and all of that how that concept leads to three dimensionality and then we add the material to it material is sort of like a last stage rather than we don't because we feel that if we start with the material first then it's going to go then you sort of restricts the form or you know development of that so yeah I mean, that's how we generally sort of go with you know when we're dealing with building like a form or something like that yeah i mean that, that's what i know uh you are not audible your your voice is not audible is the you to architect rahul mehta uh how should you choose the materials for a facade like is it art designing or you or like before you start the design and are there some limitations also like we know there are this kind of limitations which is there for a lot of materials so how do you choose the material how do you go ahead so when we evolve a vision you know which is going to culminate into a built form which is essentially going to speak to its surroundings and going to address its inhabitants uh, which is generically the focus of every architect uh the facade is the first point of perception that is how one that is how one immediately reads the building and makes makes up their mind of you know what they were, what they're going to expect so that is very important and therefore the material intent that is going to go on the facade has to be part of the design process it can't come after it it always is part of the design process the the very specification as to exactly this material or or what specification of that material i need to use or uh, you know in terms of what is the size of the panel or what is the size of the stone so on and so forth all of those details can eventually be zoomed in on as the process evolves um and you know we look at various uh, parameters such as like you rightly said i wouldn't call them limitations i think there are practical parameters that every developer or every uh, user needs to look at so you will definitely look at availability of a material you will definitely look at the cost of a material you will definitely try to understand what is the environmental impact of that material what is the safety parameter that this material provides vis a vis fire uh, what is the structural implication that this material provides uh uh what are the what are the uh, impacts on the design philosophy so at the level of the concept we might have a lot of thoughts that you know what i want this to be stainless steel or i want to have a brick uh look here i want to expose concrete uh but does that concept actually go well uh with with the local environment have we reacted well to it um and then do we want to substitute that material with say a say a panel which looks like cotton steel but is not cotton steel so all of these things uh, are are part of the design philosophy as it evolves uh, and we end with the design process but selecting a material cannot be after designing is over it has to be while you design okay uh, i'm going to come back to you with some more questions architect mehta sure. i want to monica ma'am so ma'am being an architect who is identified for unique designs and you have worked with different architectural patterns designs from europe america then like asian architecture so how would you go ahead while designing a modern facade oh uh, well <clears throat> actually i really agree with what rahul has already said that you know that the design of a facade has to be an integral part of the design but uh, like my take is that say today people they are reclaiming their connect with nature which was not there some time ago and this is generally what i try to create in my buildings so like um, say anuradha wouldn't you feel relaxed if you could work from a, like a cool shady spot in a park let's say you were in central park or lodi gardens or some or victoria <laughs> memorial <laughs> so now, now just say stretch this park over multiple levels and that's my design for a modern corporate office building that's how i conceive it and the internal geography of the building whether it is a with a lagoon or it's designed with a ramble the terraces they also become the external geography of the building 
And that's how the facade gets created. So it's not that something is just a facade. It's to understand the whole concept of a building. It's to understand this internal and external geography and that fit the materials or even the, you know, you, you, even the landscape is then fitted into the facade. It's not that it was make the building and you stick a green wall out of it. That's not my concept. Thank you so much. And uh, we do have a quiz from a viewer, but before I go to that, I would like to ask a question to architect Vijay Kulkarni. Sir, how would you define the office of clients about willing to go for a designer facade or 3D form? Like it's tough to make them spend that extra money to give a new definition to a facade? Well, clients are generally open until the question of cost comes in. Yeah? They're open for the entire thing. They want everything. But when you tell them the cost, then they start having thoughts about it. But are they willing to pay for it? Yes. Uh, but we should understand who are the clients and what is the project. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, who are the clients and what is the project? There are There is an emotional factor to it and there is a very practical, hard-headed factor to it. The emotional factor is that there are some projects which are inspirational which are city level projects, which are basically iconic buildings for the city and where cost is not a concern, but basically how the project looks, how is the project perceived as the where there is no problem about cost. The aspirational uh, aspect, where it's an office building, I want to show it up as an iconic building or uh, an individual residence, I want to have it as a different from the rest of the thing. I don't mind paying for it. So basically, on the emotional front, there's an inspirational and an aspirational aspect. Whereas on the hardcore uh, uh, aspect of it, either I consider it is the project or the client, uh, is it a productive asset for me, the project? But am I making money from it? For example, a mall and an office building or a showroom, yes, I'll pay for it. But if it is a non-productive asset, like a factory or a warehouse or a, maybe an apartment, I would not like to pay for it that much there the maintenance and the cost comes and then people. And the third aspect is, is the architect able to sell you that as a vision, as a concept? If that is so, then all these things don't matter. Then if you are enthused with that, okay, I want to go ahead with it and do it. So that's it. Okay. Uh, we have a question from an audience. It is for any of the panelists. He's asking, he is Prabodh Mathur. He's asking how to use this material as thermal insulation as it is a material for exterior part of the building. Which material? Uh, we need to know that. Before, uh, okay. Before we again come to this question, uh, so go back to uh, like Nitant once again. Yeah. Coming back to design, that's what we were discussing with you. So what are the tools that we use to create a 3D form and how to execute the elements on the site of designing? Like, can you share some slides to show your creation? Uh, so, yeah. so I'll share one project of mine, which we were sort of working on where uh, Can you just share screen with us? Yeah, I'm just sharing the screen with you. So yeah, if you see, so we were uh, about to design. So we there's a company called Muse Lab. So they come they came up with a project to us where they said that you know we wanted to create some sort of a statement piece in in a bungalow scheme where when you enter that bungalow and so this is the thing which strikes out when you look at it. So and they wanted to have like a red sort of a form which is leading towards the site. And so this was a part of a dining pavilion, which is outside, uh, what do you call a bungalow. So we, they gave us this idea of, uh, we wanted to have like a statement piece, which needs to have like a red color, but like sort of a statement. And then when you enter inside, it needs to be like a light, you know. So we were given this challenge of designing something like that. So we designed this in... So we came up with this form as in general here, what you see. So these were the forms which we were, you know, actual what we came up with. So we use, uh, most of the time we use this tools called uh, Rhinoceros 3D. We generally use that to detail these installations out. 
because uh, since it's a precision modeler so you can you know what you generally make in a digital form you can easily convert it into like a physical form and since we use a lot of uh, 3d cnc machines to build all of these so uh, anuradha your voice you're saying something your voice is sort of so yeah so this is one of so this was the top floor so the whole form was around you know uh, 6 feet by around 12 feet and then you know that's how we visualized it and then these are the form of details what we actually ended up having it so since uh, we were ready with the form and then we decided to have like a mirror sort of a finish inside we came up with we can use like a acp material here but the idea is how you need to like you need to build like a frame for it to hold it so that's how we came up with these details of then also there are these complications of uh, because acp sheet comes in 8 by 4 sort of a format so we wanted to break down to smaller elements to build something like that so we had these small small details of how these things needs to be done. So we done all of these details in Rhino 3D. So to achieve, and one of the more details thing I found out when we were designing these this element is that when a material collides at the junction of it, it sorts of creates that error. So that's why we have this gap here at the center. What you generally this gap? What you're seeing it here? So that's the gap, you know, that's the error gap. We sort of decided to keep it so the material doesn't take over the other panel as such. So, I mean, yeah, that's what the actual, how till we designed it. And uh, yeah, so, so every panel here has sort of a number to it. And then every panel then if you look at every panel here, one second. No, it's not good. But yeah, every panel here is like has a unique ID, and then every unique uh, panel has a different turning angle to itself. And so these were, you can call it like a guideline for every panel to turn. So it sort of takes its own form. So we sort of folded them using these angles here. And then we painted them. And then this is sort of how we were assembling all of these together. So this was the frame what we built. And then this is what we actually ended up making. So this site just got completed before the lockdown thing came into picture we still have to shoot this site but yeah so this was the final result so we use acp or to sort of visual like make this a reality sort of situation here so yeah this was so like in our projects we generally have this sort of a diagram which generally has these details so every panel has this number, every panel will have different edge. So these numbers are basically the number of these uh, sections, what you see in here, these guidelines are based. So these numbers are basically these numbers. So every panel had sort of a number and then another number every frame had. So we, so the basic idea for fabricating such complicated forms or complicated you know structures is to divide them to smallest possible part and then sort of build them up and then it's like a big puzzle you're solving together and taking all of them together and sort of building something yeah. so that's what i mean that's what like when we are you know dealing with any project of this manner we generally do that so yeah Thank you so much for sharing those slides and trust me, the project is looking really stunning. Thank you. That's, that's what I would say. And I'm sure a lot of viewers would also uh, feel the same thing.
so uh, i would go back to architect rahul mehta so tell me how can we use these parametric design elements for a dynamic facade design can you just throw some light on that yeah sure i think nitan did a great job of uh, showing us an example of uh, of of parametric design and essentially what is what is parametric design it's a it's an algorithmic process you know which helps you manipulate forms and respond to parameters laid out to you in a brief uh, to eventually come up with a smart and dynamic facade uh, which allows you to manipulate so many 3d forms uh, which have which have a number of uh, potential permutation combinations which one can come up with uh, but you know just beyond uh, parametric shapes and forms one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest uh, uses that these elements can provide us with is that it can actually uh, add value through thermal insulation uh, can help you with acoustics can help you with uh, energy efficiency uh, and things like that and uh, if you were to take forward what uh, nitan was just saying uh, and i think you just uh, try to pick up a question with uh, which someone asked you so yeah. so in terms of insulation and energy efficiency and in terms of uh, and in maybe taking a little bit from what monica was also saying uh, the esplanade theater if i'm not wrong in singapore at marina bay is is a is a good example of uh, something like that where you know you've got this uh, these triangular uh, pokey forms created like the durian fruit across the entire roof yeah uh, of the theater and it it's it's such a dynamic form it's such a uh, it's such a inspirational building and what it does through through its attempt is it's it's not just a dynamic form or a shape out there for us to appreciate it it actually also responds to the weather conditions there uh, it also helps in uh, uh, you know uh, using solar energy much more and and examples such as these uh, are teaching all of us that you know parametric architecture and parametric forms if applied across building typologies can help reinvent so many elements of the facade be it a canopy be it a balcony uh be it a railing be it be it a roof uh it's got it's got great possibilities okay and uh, you were just talking about some materials so can you just tell us briefly what are the good materials for making a city uh say like cd forms and all so right so so one of i mean for, look at acp for example acp is a great example of you know, for material which can which has the potential to be molded taken to taken to the right grade of fire safety it allows you in, in the right cost uh, amazing amount of flexibility uh, and use and i think nitan just showed a nice example of that uh, so yeah it it provides you a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility okay thank you so much and uh, in that monica ma'am uh, keeping in mind the city the habitat and the climate like how would you look at giving dynamics to a facade so um, firstly i must say that nitan and uh, nitan and rahul they both have uh, given such apt uh, examples like uh, i really appreciate nitan the kind of uh, uh this uh, form that you have created and uh so it's like uh, these dynamic forms it's not that they are so just a new thing they are a new evolution they evolved from a lot of old designs etc which we've always seen in the city like you can say uh, even the roof of fatehpur sikri is highly dynamic and detailed or the solail the bris or the kind of ways that we used in traditional architecture for thermal insulation but what we have today is an adaptation and that's what creates the beauty in modern architecture and modern facade like to me let's say the facade is like the facial expression of a building and the moment you add dynamicity to it it becomes the smile you know so you start giving it starts beginning to emote and No, and how do you use it you are not just using it just as a way to create the expression but you also use all these factors to actually build in the way that you are going to give the you know thermal insulation the way you are going to give 
the weather protection, the weather boards, whether like especially in our climate, the weather board is a very important detail in Bengal where, you know, we have so much moisture and rain. So we try to always incorporate the design such that these start building these factors into the building, you know. They deflect the heat, they create the textures. So that's the way we sort of use the, you know, dynamic facades in today's architecture, I think. Okay. And uh, there's, a one, there's one question which I really want to ask you, ma'am. You have done your studies on symbology and all, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I read it in your study. Why don't you tell us a bit more about that, based on the like these shapes, symbols and all. How would you connect? Yeah, so uh, I see a lot of architects, they definitely uh, study architecture, symbols, etc. What my work was not to create a new kind of knowledge, but to create a better understanding of what we all already know. And the idea is to understand that, see, you walk into a space. Let's say you walk into a church in Milan, or you walk into, let's say, a Charbagh garden, or you walk into Matri Mandir, and you feel peace. You feel the calm. So how is it that an emotion was appropriated through some very definite physical elements which were used in the design, which are used to appropriate human emotion. And I started studying that how, what are these elements in design and how do they influence us? Also see in traditional architecture, it was, the idea was, uh, you know, to bring in an element of a uh, symbol of powers. So they use the strong geometric forms. And as we move to democratic forms, we see in architecture these ge high geometric forms transferred into more free flowing, more abstract kind of forms, the way our society moved. And that's how we studied the symbols and the way they made different forms appear and what appeals to us at different times. Okay, that's good. Uh, architect Kulkarni, I would ask you the same question, like, since you are also into doing projects at various cities and all, so in mind the same thing, the city, the habitat, the time, climate, how would you look at giving the same kind of dynamic shape to a Fata, if I ask you the same question? See, I think Vonika has very well put it, uh, but to expand on what she said, uh, and to take uh, elements from what Natant and what uh, Rahul has said, the first three words uh, uh, of your question, keeping in mind, how would you design? Now, if you have to keep in mind city, context, habitat, and time, then it is a very tough question. But if you don't want to see, keep it and do to want to respect the context, then we have our cities, which are faceless cities, which are one city looks like the other. What our entire perception of a city is our experience in the public realm, how we basically move about in the public and what affects us as a city, what we take back as a vision of the city. With technology, we have the option of using technology to harness it to the extent that our buildings can look better, our buildings can be more dynamic. But at the same time, when we're talking of facades, we essentially today mean the skin. And the form of the building is separate, whether the skin is basically an adornment, which is a separate thing. But does that skin protect you? Does that give you thermal insulation? Does that skin breathe? Is it able to basically give the viewer an experience of the outside as well as a dynamism to the viewer from the outside is what we have to consider. How can we adapt materials, either traditional materials or traditional forms in today's context with the available technology? For example, Nitan showed a very complex geometrical form, but when he was explaining, he said it is complex, but in effect, when he came down to the basic element, it was a triangle. So basically, the technology has helped us take that simple basic form of a square or a triangle and basically make fantastic shapes, calculate it, adapt it to the material, adapt it to the process of production of that material and putting it as a facade on the building. So this is the true challenge for us to how to be contextual in today's time with today's forms, today's materials, as well as be 
specific to the context of the city in, in the climate, the, uh, the context, the need, the use. That's a nice way of explaining it. So going back to Nikans once again, like, so can you elaborate a bit about the guidelines and basics that are to be considered for CD designs and what are the tools that are used? I'm sure there are some specific tools which are there for this design. Uh, yeah, so I would like to take that point uh, which Mr. Vijay has made where, you know, like technology allows us to break like a complex form into very smaller elements and like to look at it, if, if you look at it in the nature also, triangles or the three vertex surfaces are always the most manageable or most flattest element ever. So if you look at every form, whatever, even, even if you look at in uh, parametricism or whatever you want to call these terms, they are generally either divided into triangles or they are either divided into quads, which are like a four point surfaces. So I just want to share a screen which you know, I'm gonna show another example of this. It just is loading something. So we had made. Uh, so we generally use this software called Rhino to you know, Rhino to visualize it, and then we use Grasshopper to detail out all of these details. I'm just trying to load the file it's for some reason. So one of the, so we did this installation in, what do you call, uh, we did it in ACP, we use like a CNC sort of machines to cut uh, the element and I'm just trying to load these drawings but it's sort of not loading them, but yeah, let me try it. I think there is some glitch here. So if you look, if you can you can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. So this is what you call we created this sort of a drawing. This was given to CNC machines, and then this uh, blue color line, what you see, the is the one which was used when we fold a material so it's sort of so we uh, use that v groove machine which is used v groove tool to cut the acp from the back and then which allows us to fold at a specific angle that given what the angle was specified in this number and this red thing is where the outer cutting happens and then uh, these are the uh, circles where we use rivet like a holes to do like a rivet sort of a situation so we created this nested um, so because of the technology what happens is we can save a lot of material imagine doing this without the you know without the use of these tools what we have used i mean it's almost has like a almost very nullified wastage compared to if you use it like a traditional way of using uh, any other material even though what do you call the frame what we had used that was also again uh, you know, CNC laser cut, and then we sort of made it. And so, yeah, I mean, that's the guideline. Guideline is you have to make like a, so when you make these drawings for CNC cutting, you need to, so basically it's like a path which sort of machine follows. So you have to create a set of drawings which follows that path and it sort of does the work of cutting a material or doing sort of other situations. So yeah, I mean, that's what basically. Okay. The details are. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing those designs. So, moving a bit away from designs and going more towards uh, resources about constructing facades, I would ask Monica, ma'am, 
that how can we introduce more renewable resources and structuring of Atala? Well, uh, see, traditional architecture used a lot of uh, you know, earth resources. They used stone, they brick. But over time, but at that time, construction activity was highly, you know, limited. And over time, our large scale construction activity is causing a huge demand for building material, building resources. And it's also causing a large scale depletion of our natural resources. So, you know, how long can we uh, keep hollowing our ponds and riverbeds already, you know, in Bengal, there are a lot of areas which are very famous for the soil, which creates the best first class bricks. All of it is almost gone right now. We can't keep depending on these areas to provide us the first class brick. The first class brick itself has gone. Again, with stones, if I see all around the country, I see people see that so many areas, they've just cut off the mountains. So we are hollowing our earth for all these kind of building materials for this kind of a usage. And it's time that we need to shift our focus to using renewable material, renewable resources, as well as, and very importantly, I feel we should introduce industrial as well as agricultural waste. I think that is kind of the future. Like I was recently, uh, I came across a thesis where the student has put up a whole project using straw bale architecture. Straw is a huge agricultural you know, by waste product. And we need to incorporate not just industrial, but also agricultural waste into our renewable material sources. It's, I think that's the kind of future. If we use materials which are renewable, as well as materials which use the waste. Thank you so much. So I'm going to come to the last question of today's webinar before I show you all a surprise. So my last question is going to be for architect Rahul Mehta. Uh, so we can we make 3D shapes which can make the facade dynamic and more um, and say like further more useful? So uh, if you want to further experiment with uh, with 3D forms and uh, and different typologies. Uh, and you want to inspire yourself uh, even more. I think um, Monica said something very interesting uh, about nature uh, and how she, how she likes to use nature across her work. I think nature is the best inspiration uh, that any one of us can use. Uh, if you look at uh, parametric architecture and biomimicry coming together, I don't think there could be anything better than parametric architecture and biomimicry coming together. Uh, engineers have have been trying to mimic nature since a while. So if you see, uh, there are super strong uh, fibers which are used in industries. Uh, and this is a lot of it is a takeaway from the spider's web and the silk. Um, a lot of adhesives, again, industrially used uh, are, are a takeaway from the gecko's feet. Something as simple as the 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 wind turbines uh, those are inspired from the fins of whales um, and architects are constantly getting inspired by the cuckoo's nest or a water bubble or a wave or an aerodynamic dune uh, so i don't think we need to look anywhere else i think we just look at nature and i, I believe that there is a lot of r d that is already going into uh, into this uh, and as and as architects, designers, I think all of us, if we just deep dive into this, uh, and we can really evolve our buildings and our facades in such a dramatic fashion, uh, and with probably help like guys like you, uh, you know, you're you're at the forefront of uh, making cladding systems and facade uh, technology. Uh, if guys like you can help us, uh, you know, redefine 3D shapes. Uh, taking some cues from nature, I think the possibilities are infinite for anyone. Definitely. Yeah, like that's how the, the cladding industry and architects come together. That's how things are being made. We provide you made. It's like that. So, uh, we're going to be our last question to the panelists for this webinar. And as the name of the webinar says, it's a 
the third dimension and we are going to unveil the first look of uh, about cd design so uh, a special surprise for all the audience present here today and the panelists also so aludecor is launching a very special book on cd forms and patterns which has around 31 special designs created at the Aludeco studio with our aluminum composite panels only and they are done and executed by our design assist team which is based out of New Delhi. So some very unique patterns and all uh, shapes have been created by them for some projects for architects. This book it explores the details of these designs. So each shape has been very uniquely planned, executed so to speak a bit more about this book, a few more lines, so I'm going to call the expert for this, uh, Ms. Devesh Kumar, who's the technical head of Aludecor. There, there is Devesh. Welcome. Can you tell us uh, about the book, some, some good things about the book, how it can be used? Over to you, Devesh. Good evening, everyone in the panel and uh, to the audience. Uh, my name is Devesh. I would be going through what we intended to do with the 3D designs. Uh, I'll show you a presentation that would uh, give us an idea of what we have done. So just give me one sec. Just do that. So right now, due to lockdown, we are not printing so many copies of the book. So the PDF uh, files will be shared and we're going to try to make few you know, like special copies for the panelists and I'm going to courier them across to you for sure. There, David has his uh, presentation ready. Yes, thank you. Uh, these are some of the designs from the book which uh, we have uh, evolved. It was our thought that uh, we should turn and twist and check what the metal can do, what can metal can perform. It was never an idea to make you uh, visualize only these designs. It was just a concept that we can tell you that, okay, the metal can bear to these limitations. The metal can understand uh, these kind of tensile strengths or metal can understand these kind of elongations and movement without any deformation. So these are some of the designs from the book. What we have also done in the book is we have given uh, some tried and tested dimensions for the wind load conditions, for uh, the exterior uh, conditions, and so that the people would uh, can expand and contract according to their design in the uh, same dimensions also. And we can also, we have, what we have done out here is we'll be giving you, providing you calculations of each of the dimensions according to the event speed of the area. What we have done in the book is we have given a generalized calculation for how to calculate the event load when you are trying to do uh, such kind of a shape in uh, exteriors. In interiors, yes, most of the factors will not be taken place, but in the exteriors, yes, there would be certain considerations. Not only this, we have also put in some of the uh, material like uh, back support, how to calculate these back supports. We have given a generalized uh, calculation so that everybody can put in their own material, put in their own back support, put in their own design and calculate it freely. In this book, we have come up with 30 designs and uh, surely we will be coming out with many more designs uh, as far as things are concerned. And uh, we would be uh, taking all your uh, fraternity's help of architectures and designers for it. And we will be trying and testing those forms so that it becomes easier uh, for everyone to understand how these forms are made. This is an exercise that we wanted to do so that we could share what our material with right back support can provide you. 
thank you all and uh, i would also like to uh, share one more thought that is uh during these times uh, people are talking more on hygiene people are talking more on uh, uh corona covid pre covid post covid so what we have done is we have come out with a panel for interiors which is an insect free uh, insect repellent panels so uh, if certain areas if you put in those then it would increase to our hygiene it would also increase that uh, there are less of diseases coming to our workplace to our home so this way we are trying to uh, bring in the society towards more hygiene so that's an armor uh, version of ours uh, acp which uh, miss anuradha would be sharing with you all the panelists and the attendees thank you everyone thank you You're welcome devesh thanks so much for thank your you. presentation and taking us through the book so this insect pets like acp which we have launched very soon i'm going to send you the pdf copies of them and as and when the lockdown reopens and i start visiting you all again so the hard copies will also go so for the time being we'll be doing with pdf copies and uh, i really appreciate all of you eminent panelists for being a part of this session and sharing such insightful information details about designs and forms and i'm sure the audience also loved it so thank you so much once again thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for having us thank you thank you good night